Good morning, folks. A quick abatement of fear. The buoys in event mode off Indonesia show a less than 3 meter deviation. Very small, and yes, possibly related to the 6.4 quake that struck there yesterday. I've said before, six-pointers probably don't even phase these people anymore, but this one was located on a subduction zone prone to thrust fault, so a baby tsunami isn't wholly unexpected, or much to be afraid of. But 11 minutes later, way more concerning and possibly related way underground was an eruption at Krakatoa. That volcano is not a joke, and all alert levels are elevated. We also had a 4.7 hit the Galapagos Islands, another 4-pointer hit the Northeast Caribbean, which is shaking so much lately it truly has to be one of the primary areas of concern going forward. Philippines have also been rocking this morning with 4 5-pointers already. This is the US wind map. It's usually more visually enticing than anything, but useful to see how yesterday's Torcon came true. You see this red area on yesterday's Torcon just north of the Gulf and into the Carolinas? Isaac remnants over Indiana were sucking up Gulf moisture and dumping tons of rain the old-fashioned way. No star water here. As we pull up the rain records for yesterday, that was our primary focal area, with Alabama and the Carolinas taking the worst of the downpours. We're also going to have to watch Leslie as she creeps north. A few of the computer models are now showing it going west. And rounding up weather, Malta took unbelievable storms. A month's worth of rain in two hours. That could be star water. Eyes up top, folks. I will get to the CME impact and magnetic storm here momentarily. I just figured you might want to see the birth of a coronal hole. That dark spot came out of nowhere and could deliver powerful solar wind in three days. Back to the impact. Orange. Yellow and green are the solar wind density, speed, and temperature respectively, all spiking around 1200 UTC. That's the impact from the massive filament eruption. Looking at Ovation Prime, we can see the particle bombardment rising to dangerous levels. The Fluxgate magnetometer was oscillating as you'd expect it to. Our shields called in sick and solar plasma blasted our ionosphere all day long. We also had a strong induction near the baseline around that 1200 UTC mark. You can see the corresponding ground currents. If the big solar storm ever hits, the ground currents are what fries the grid. You can see we appear to be coming out of the magnetic storm, although reverberation storms for 24 hours are common and possible. This is important because you can see the solar wind has not yet fully quieted down. Our shields are weakened already, and we got another CME on the way from yesterday. It came from Active Region 11560 over here and on the right. Not at all dangerous as it was yesterday with a weakening central positive Umbra, but she's already popped off her CME and is turning around to allow some young guns a shot at the title. Yesterday we told you the magnetics were mixing down here, and today NOAA has it labeled Beta Gamma. But we can't ignore the little spot above it, although far less potentially powerful. The clean lateral spreading of bipolar regions often surge surrounding areas, like what happened at about 3 a.m. Eastern Time. That's yet another Earth-facing eruption. Very easy to identify here. That's number three that may hit Earth. The second one is the one we're waiting for now. Let's hope for some magnetic recovery before that. It's the news, folks. Be safe.